Hey everybody, it's Jason with XM Antiques. I'm going to do another quick video. I've been pretty busy putting uh, new flooring down in my house. I'll throw a couple of pictures up of that. But um, so I didn't really had a chance to go pick anything new. I got a couple of things from an auction. Um, I'll throw some pictures up of that as well. But I wanted to focus this video on how I got the B17 propellers. Um, a gentleman contacted me through Facebook. He'd heard I buy military stuff and said he had a B-17 propeller off of a uh, an actual B-17. Uh, of course, I was curious and told him I'd come look at it. It was, it was probably about an hour and a half or an hour or so away from me here in Lexington, South Carolina. But, um, of course, when I told my wife I was going to go look at a B-17 propeller, uh, she said, Jason, you're going to go buy it. I said, no, 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 I'm just going to go look at it just to see what the guy's got, if it's actually a, a propeller or, or what it is. Anyway, so needless to say, of course I bought it when I went and looked at it. Um, I thought it was, this is probably one of the coolest things that I have purchased. Um, it is a massive propeller. Um and I believe I weighed each blade, and they're just shy of 90 pounds a piece. And you see there's three of them. Um, the only thing he had changed was the hub here. He said that he actually had this chrome-plated um, because he was going to put it together and, and display it. Um, it has. He said it has all the parts. I'm not familiar with all of the parts of a propeller, but including the bolts and the nuts and everything. But he uh, told me the story how he got it. He was um, he was a pilot in the Navy, and this I don't know how old exactly he was. Maybe it was late seventies uh, when I bought this from him. But and he was in California, and he helped out a air museum on uh, Beale Air Force Base. And so they contacted him and asked him if he'd be interested in uh, reskinning a B seventeen. Um, for a static display for the museum there. Um, I forget the tail number off the top of my head, but I'll post the uh, information on the video too. So he said he got into taking the skin off, told the... Uh... Anyway, when he was contacted about reskinning the aircraft, they, uh, he told me he'd need you know, a few guys, three or four guys, and the uh, gentleman who had asked him was, I believe, a captain in the Air Force on Beale uh, Air Force Base and was in charge of the museum. And he said, whatever you need, we'll get it to you. Um, he said they contacted him because he'd been in aviation his whole life and, and knew a lot about aircraft and had done some, some things for him structurally for some of their displays. Um, and so when he was, they were skinning the aircraft, he found all kinds of things in between the, the skin and the fuselage, like packs of uh, Chesterfield cigarettes and things like that. And said so he actually, him and the guys tried to, to light one up and smoke it just to see. Uh, this was 1988, I believe he told me. So that pack of cigarettes had been there since around 1944 or 45. So I said it wasn't too good. But anyway, after we were getting close to being f complete with the aircraft, um, a general from, I believe it's Offutt Air Force Base in Nebraska. Anyway, I probably butchered that, but... Um, a general from that base come, came down and was just touring the base and saw the aircraft near complete and told him that he wanted to uh, have the aircraft for his base. For Sorry about that. Um, anyway, that general wanted to have the aircraft for a static display on his base and uh, worked out a trade. I, I can't remember the type of aircraft that he traded um, with that base for, um, but they said they actually flew... The, ba the aircraft from the the base in Nebraska to Beale and then they had to transport the B-17 to the other base to swap planes um, and they when they were complete with the aircraft they, they renamed it um, Homesick Angel which is actually a B-17 that, that crashed um, in World War II I don't believe the original plane this came off of had a name I think it was just completed off the line and they had some mechanical issues or something with it. And it actually, 
I can't remember if it crashed or had an emergency landing here in the States a few times. Um, so it never actually made it into combat. But the propeller, he took off um, because he said they were replacing some of the propellers because they were kind of damaged. But this one was still intact and in good shape. And it was a better quality than what they were replacing it with because um, this was an original propeller. Uh, so he asked him if, he'd take it, if he could keep it, take it off, and he did so. And he brought it from, from Beale, and he said he moved to Texas, and he had it in Texas with him for a while, then he moved here to South Carolina. So this propeller has followed him, or he's, he's carried it the entire time. Um, anyway, so here I am with a B-17 propeller. Um, and again, these blades, I'm not sure if you can see, I'm six foot even, about six foot tall. And this blade's almost as tall as me. Um, so I have that actually listed on eBay, only because I'm not doing any justice here. Uh, I believe put together, it's about a 13 foot across um, propeller. Um, so if I had a place to put it together and display it, I certainly would but I don't think that's going to happen. So I have a list on eBay. If anybody's interested in any information on it, just contact me. The only thing I'm not doing with it is I'm not shipping it. So you'd have to pick it up because it's just, it would be too much shipping. Um, having to crate it up and everything. But um, also the same guy uh, had a few other items. He had um, actually two 100 pound practice bombs, two, uh, 2.75 inch rockets and two like naval gun rounds, which I've all I put all those in the booze and they sold almost immediately. Um, I'll post some pictures of those now. Um, but also, he had I think I've mentioned these before, shown it in another video. Um, the injection seat. And it's actually, he said he mounted it himself onto the rolling casters. Um, and he had two of them. I bought both of them from him. And he used these in like his little man cave area. I think he said his friends would come over and they would roll around in them. And uh, I'm sure still tell stories um, about their flight days. But, uh. I can't remember if it was this one or the other one I have actually in the booth in Little Mountain that he had actually mounted them on like these rails where you could almost kind of push yourself up in it where it would kind of go vertical in the air, um, kind of give you the feeling like it was ejecting you out of the seat basically out of the aircraft. I mean, but I decided with this one, I put the other one immediately into a booth. Um, it hasn't been retouched or anything done to it. It's a little different model than this one um, but I think with this one I'm going to actually um, repaint you know try to keep it close to the same the original color as I can um, I'm going to probably leave the headrest material and everything like it is and I might try to work on the casters a little bit to get them freed up and rolling and kind of refurbish it before I sell it or it might even stay in in my collection my kid my son loves to sit in it and pretend that he's flying in a plane um, but I'll do a video about that soon. Um, if you have any questions about any of, uh, my military stuff or my booths or where we're located, I'll put the information best I can up here and you can shoot me an email or shoot me a message on Facebook and I'll be glad to, to chat with you. I love talking, uh, military, um, and maybe one day we'll get through in a video and I'll go through some of these. I don't know if you can see behind me here. It's a little bit of a mess because of the redoing the floors. So some of it's not military stuff. But all the tubs you see are all full of uh, military as well as all the foot lockers. Those are all full of military and some of the other hanging up items are, are my family pieces. Um, but... We'll go through these someday and, and check out some of them if I don't have a, a huge uh, bulk collection of, of bought in the meantime. But I appreciate you watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like us on Facebook and see you later.